Okay, let's do some problems. So we have a conversion divergent nozzle, okay. Looking good. It's got an exit to throat ratio of 10.5, so that means area of exit over the area of throat is equal to 10.25. Reservoir pressure and temperature are five atmospheres and 600 degrees Rankine. So that's five atmospheres and 600 degrees Rankine. Ah, evil units. And we want to know what our Mach number, our pressure, and our temperature are at the nozzle exit. Okay. Mach number, pressure, and temperature. What are you? Question mark. Well, the first thing we need to know is, well, what was the Mach number there? I don't know. But you know what? We can find it out, okay? We can find it out. Now, I wrote it this way on purpose because I feel like you're going to do that on purpose. Remember that area of the throat, that's equal to a star. And so what you really were given is that A exit over A star is equal to 10.25. So with that, I can then see. Let's go to Appendix A in our um, textbook, and we can look up where that value happens. Once again, I'm going to look for the closest value. So I have A over A star right here in the last column. I'm going to find 10.25. Now, if you go down, what you'll realize is that the number is actually dropping as I go down to a point. If you go down far enough, it will actually increase. Okay. And so I'm going to find 10.25. And so right here, that's pretty close. That gives me a Mach number of 0.84. However, this is the part where you should say, no, Dr. Kidd, that's wrong. And the reason for it is because I am in a convergent divergent nozzle and it's a supersonic flow. If I have a throat Mach number, which is one, which I'm assuming it is, then I'm not going to get the subsonic solution. I will actually get the supersonic solution, which means I have to go down a little bit further. And let's see here. This looks right. Yep. Oh, but that's 1.025. My bad. Keep on going. 10 to the power of 2. There we go. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. There we are. 10.25. There we are. I can read numbers. And so that's a Mach number of 3.95. Okay. So we got our Mach number right there, 3.95. That looks good. So let's go ahead and write that down. So from appendix A, I get that if I have A E over A star, and this is supersonic, my Mach number is going to be equal to 3.95. Cool. So now let's figure out Last little details here. So also from the isometric properties tables, I can get my value for P naught over P exit as well as T naught over T exit. So let's go back and find those real quick and plug them in. So right here, P naught over P exit is simply 142. Whew. That's a big jump. And the temperature is the fourth column. That's 4.12. Okay. So I can find out both of these things. So I've got 142 for one. And I have 4.12 for the other. And that makes me super happy because that's just the numbers rearranged. I'm a nerd. It's okay. And let's see here, yes. The last little detail is this pressure coming in right here, okay? This was the reservoir pressure and temperature. And when you have a reservoir, the reservoir isn't moving, okay? Reservoirs are stationary. And so that means it's also equal to the stagnation properties. So what it gave me in the beginning was not P not P and T, it was P naught and T naught. 
So P naught is equal to five atmospheres and T naught was equal to 600 degrees Rankine. Also, it's isentropic. So that means that those don't change. P naught is equal to a constant and T naught is also equal to a constant. So with that, I can solve for my exit pressure and my exit temperature. So P exit is going to be equal to PE over P naught times P naught. It's going to be equal to 1 over 142 times 5, which is roughly 0 0.035 atmospheres. So that's dropped quite a bit. And my temperature of the exit is going to be very similar. That's simply be equal to T exit over T naught times T naught, which is equal to 1 over 4.12 times 600 degrees Rankine. I've cooled down significantly to 145.6 degrees Rankine. Okay, so I have my Mach number. I have everything I need for this problem, and we are done.